There are several dinosaurs that are pretty important in the Jurassic Park franchise. Velociraptors have played an integral role in presenting themes like chaos and control to the audience. And larger theropods like the T-Rex have become iconic in their own right during some truly terrifying scenes. But apart from the famous carnivores that the series is well known for, there are also some really important plant eaters that are just as important as the others that I've mentioned. And you can't get much more important than an animal like the Apatosaurus, which happened to be the first dinosaur that the endorsement team got to see in the original Michael Crichton novel. These long-necked sauropods have popped up in quite a few places in the wider media series without too many people really knowing that much about it. So today, I wanted to take a look at the history of the Apatosaurus over the course of the entire Jurassic Park franchise. <laughs> Apatosaurus made its first appearance in the franchise within Michael Crichton's original novel. In this book, we first see the dinosaurs hanging out by a lagoon in John Hammond's Jurassic Park. Much like the Brachiosaurus that Grant and Ellie get to see in the 1993 movie, the Apatosaurus happens to be the first dinosaur that the endorsement team sets eyes on in the book. Originally, 17 individuals were bred for the Nublar Resort, but unfortunately, only 12 of them made it all the way to the end of the story. And that was before the unfortunate napalm bombing that would end up taking everything out. Now, of course, with Brachiosaurus replacing Apatosaurus in the movie, it unfortunately wouldn't get to make an appearance in the original film by Steven Spielberg. It was, however, always considered to make appearances in both that film and its sequel. Several early drafts of both Jurassic Park and The Lost World include the Apatosaurus in a number of different scenes. Sometimes they'd show up as needing to be listed as embryos that Nedry steals, or possibly even dead bones that the Gatherer team would pass through in the Worker Village. Unfortunately, we don't have a skull or name for either of these, so it doesn't really count in the long run. The next serious appearance for the Apatosaurus would actually have to be Michael Crichton's sequel novel, The Lost World, where the dinosaurs are shown to be in a symbiotic relationship with a much smaller Parasaurolophus. With both species living near a river, the Paras would be on the lookout for any hungry predators that may try to ambush the herbivores during their drinking. Since the Paras had much better eyesight and the Apatosaurus had stronger tails made for thrashing defense, it wound up being a pretty beneficial relationship. Apart from that book, Apatosaurus would also make several smaller appearances over the years in both Topps JP comic books and Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder for the Game Boy Advance. Also during this time period, it was supposed to show up in Operation Genesis until it sadly got cut from the game. It wouldn't show up in an actual movie until the release of 2015's Jurassic World. Finally, Apatosaurus was chosen to show up in a feature film, and its role happened to be pretty important for a specific character. It's during the death scene of one wounded individual where Claire Deering actually learns to view these prehistoric beings as more than just numbers on a spreadsheet. My guess for making this the dinosaur that compels Claire to change is that the filmmakers wanted to make up for lost opportunities for the veteran Crichton dino in the past. It's finally in a movie, so let's make it worth something for the hardcore novel fans out there. Now, the Apato's appearance in Jurassic World would result in a whole lot of other appearances as well. The dinosaur was featured in the Lego video game, Jurassic World the game, and the very first VR Jurassic experience that was ever released. Here, people could experience an up-close and personal encounter with one long-necked dinosaur that was waking up in a primal redwoods forest next to an old-school JP Wrangler. Of course, Apatosaurus would come back for a role in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, where we'd actually get to see them run past and share the screen with the original Jurassic Park movie sauropod mascot, the Brachiosaurus. Mattel would produce some small minifigures based on this dino, and it would also show up in the two new game releases, Jurassic World Alive, as well as Jurassic World Evolution. You could also catch it in the Dave & Buster's VR experience, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And so far, that's it. That is the entire legacy of the Apatosaurus in the Jurassic Park franchise. We wouldn't learn that Engine had any of their DNA until the viral marketing sites came out with evidence during the release of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But now, it looks like these dinosaurs are here to stay, and almost a shoe-in for Jurassic World 3. Now, I'm curious to hear what all of you guys think about this long-necked dinosaur. Is this one of your favorite sauropods in the franchise? And also, what did you think about its usage in the original book? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. 
It really means the world to me that all of you continue to watch my videos, and I never want any of you to forget that. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.